Well, it's, it's that time of year. It, it, it fly by, you know, it flies by. It seems like it was yesterday we were playing in a bowl game and recruiting, and, and now it's time to uh, – not time to get after it. Had a had a good fall camp. We've stayed healthy, uh, and, and guys worked hard. And teams coming together. Now it's time to go out and put it on the field and, and see what we're made of. Um, UConn presents some problems because we don't really know what to expect. Been asked several times, how do you prepare for a team – New head coach, new coordinators, really no film to go, uh, you know, go off of, and, and that is a real problem. We we don't really know what to expect. We're going to have to adjust very quickly. Um, we talked all week about just controlling what we can control, which is us. Uh, you know, we want to go out and play clean football. We want to go out and play with great effort. We want to go out and do the things that that we uh, we are asked to do. Do them well. Avoid the turnovers. Avoid the penalties. The the big mistake. And then we'll have to rally to what they are. We'll find out early in the game just how they're going to play defensively, just what to expect offensively, you know, really what, what it's going to look like. We have to do a great job adjusting. And I think our kids are aware of that. And hopefully we, uh, hopefully we can do that at, at a level and at a pace that, um, you know, that, that gives us a chance to be, be competitive and can be competitive from the first snap on. Other than that, we're going to keep doing what we're doing every day, just getting ready and look forward to a Saturday right here at home. What questions do you have? Jacob Nielsen, can I ask you about the uh, the new jerseys that were released this morning? Can you give us some context on how those sort of came to be? And, uh, yeah, just a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, wasn't expecting that to be my first question for the day, but, hey, might as well be. Jake, um, I don't know. We 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 want to we want to change all of our uniforms out. It's 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 impossible to do them all at once. It's just way too costly um, and extremely expensive. And so this was a year that we wanted to change our road road uniforms. And in looking at possibilities of patterns and jersey designs, uh, just kind of a throwback to uh, the Merlin Olson days with the shoulder stripes and and pants stripes just kind of kept coming up. And as we talked to Nike, they had a they had an example that that we thought was really, really clean, classy, uh, and, and would look good in a ton of different uh, combinations. So that's what we went with. I think it came out really, really well. Guys are gonna like it and eventually we'll have we'll have uh, you know a blue uh, to go with it. But uh, you know the whites and staying here and playing at home in an all white environment is pretty cool to start with a new uniform. Anderson, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. I just wanted to ask you uh, collectively, what positional groups do you feel made the biggest strides during fall camp? What areas of the game do you feel you shored up the most uh, during those those last three weeks? Wow, tough questions right out of the gate. Um, you know, I, I feel like you kind of have to talk about the wide receiver group just because you lost so much productivity and there's such a – you know, just a big void when you consider 30-plus touchdowns and I don't know how many catches and yards, but it was a lot. I, I've been really pleased at how that group has attacked the problem, uh, uh, you know, r really collectively. The fact that um, you're getting plays from everybody, we're playing a lot of guys, we're using a lot of personnel packages, but then the veteran in the room in terms of uh, McGriff has taken ownership uh, of the room. So I've been really, really pleased with that. That is where we lost the most from one room. Uh, beyond that, it was one guy here or there. I do think that at linebacker, I, I think A.J. Bong Bachan has picked up a ton of slack and M.J. Tafisi stepping in as he has. I, I feel like the two of those guys have played very well together all camp and have communicated well and picked up where we, we left off in, in terms of Justin Rice. So, you know, I, I, I don't know that, that it's fair to – to really just talk about those two, but they're the two off the top of my head that I've noticed probably the biggest, either the biggest shoes to feel um, and also maybe just something that has been noticeable on a daily basis. Probably if we any further than that, just the ability for Daniel Grzyzak to step in and combine with Pat and, and Byron Vaughns to take over I thought were huge shoes to fill in Nick Henniger and just what he brought to the table every day in energy and productivity. So I, I'm hoping that all three of those areas that when you watch us play on Saturday, it's seamless. It, it doesn't, you don't see a, a big difference from last year. If you do, hopefully it's just in a good way. 
more product, you know, production or or maybe more guys stepping in and playing. But I'd like to think that we've attacked those issues in, in a good way. Eric Francis, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. So uh, with 106.9 The Fan, I, I just, your comments about Jim Mora, um, NFL coach, UCLA, stepping into a situation at UConn, which has struggled for several years, and then he looks like he's lost his uh, defensive coordinator. don't know if that's a permanent thing or not, but just th if you could comment on the coach and the coaching staff on the other side of the field from you and, and who you're going to be facing in Logan on, on Saturday. Well, it's not every day that you face a guy that's got that track record. I mean, to play, you know, to coach in the NFL like he has and at the Power Five level, I mean, it, it speaks for itself. So, a uh, tremendous amount of respect for his career and what he's been able to do. He he obviously stepped into a little bit of a strange situation, and, and it's gotten stranger with the absence of the defense coordinator. But he's a defensive guy, and I have to believe that he can step in and, and, and get things calmed down, and, and they'll come in ready to play. Um, I'll, I'll tell you the same thing I tell the players. I just have to assume that if we can go from one and five to 11 and three, so can anybody else. And I know they've got anywhere from 10 to 15 transfer players in the two deep on their roster. We have to expect the best team we're going to see all season. And I know that's saying a lot because there's some great teams on the roster, but we play them one at a time. And you got a great coach staff with a lot of years under their belt, and they have the ability to come in and affect their roster just like we did. Uh, we don't want to. Uh, look past anything other than the first game, what we can do, and respect the, the fact that they're going to come in and play lights out. Coach Anderson, Jason Turner again. I wanted to ask you about Jackson Mitchell there, a linebacker. He's a Butkus Award candidate, had 120 tackles last year, I think three forced fumbles. Uh, what do you see from him that allows him to be, you know, so productive? A downhill physical player that can run. I mean, I think any time you get to the, to the ball that many times, you, you obviously have a knack for it. You have a nose for the ball, and you know that's not something that that you that you just see off film. But he is always around the ball, and he tends to play uh, downhill. Uh, I think you know he's, he he should fit what they do. Uh, you, you basically, I know there's a transition going on defensively right now, but they they stayed in the house with the defense coordinator, and there's a track record between him and Jim. So I would think he's probably of of the guys on the field the most familiar with what they're already doing, and would expect him to come in and continue to play at a really high level. And you're going to have to get a body on him every snap. Coach Brian Phillips, Big Blue USU Aggie News. UConn not naming a starting quarterback, how tough is it to prepare for what they're going to give offensively to you guys when it could be any one of four guys at this point in time? Yeah, I, I think just week one in general is got to be a nightmare for a defensive coach. Uh, we do at least, I think, have some idea of what we expect the personality to be of the offensive coordinator himself. And um, – not sure that that it's going to matter which one of the quarterbacks plays. However, uh, we know they brought in a Penn State transfer, and and then they've got another kid coming back off an of injury. Uh, it, it it may sound cliche, but we just got to line up and and play sound defense and tackle well, uh, and be ready for a little bit of everything. First quarter, first half, especially our defense can have to do a great job of taking some notes and, and getting in and getting on the sideline and adjusting really, really quickly. Uh, but it, it's a nightmare for the defense staff at this point, not knowing what to expect because you, you can't dictate. You just have to line up and adjust and you got to do it on the fly. And as you mentioned, it could be any number of guys and all bring different skill sets to the table. Patrick Mayhorn with the Ag Ship. Um, you, you've mentioned sort of trying to just uh, prepare within yourselves for a, you know, a, a new head coach. Um, what does the, without asking you to devolve too much, what does the uh, actual preparation process look like when you have so many transfers on an opposing roster and you have to sort of prepare for guys that you've never seen in these systems before? Yeah, I mean, it, it just comes down to X's and O's. It's not the particular person in, in, in the sense. It's more 
what do we look like versus this set? How do we, you know, what if we get this? What if we get that? And, and try to cover as many bases as you can. A little bit of fall camp is about that anyway. You're trying to prepare for an entire season over the course of a month. And and you may be preparing in fall camp for something you don't see till week 10. But when you see it, it's going to matter. So take that approach. We've prepared for what it looks like when they go tackle over. We've prepared for a formation of the boundary, empty, you know, two tights. Try to recall from that stuff and stay within the framework of what we are. And if we play with great tempo, if we chase the ball well, if we tackle well and we avoid the undisciplined mistake, then then we have a chance to be successful. Uh, beyond that, we're going to have to adjust in game to what we're actually seeing. Uh, are they are they playing with tempo? Are they playing with two and three tight ends? Is the quarterback extremely mobile? That is an in game adjustment, and our offense will deal with some of that as well. Are they three down? Are they four down? Are they blitzing? Are they playing coverage? You're going to have to adjust, and, and whoever adjusts uh, quickly and, and at the you know really the most efficiently gives you an edge, uh, especially early in the season, game one, game two of the season, at least up to a point where you start having enough tape to have some patterns and some tendencies and a better idea of what you're going to see. Personnel question for you: um, Looking at the depth chart that was released this, this morning, Fulipule is. Uh, He's in the two deep on three separate positions on the offensive line. So is he kind of going to be a glue guy depth wise for you guys? And then overall, just what's your confidence level in the offensive line position group? Well, yeah, I, you know, I felt like we've we've had a really good week. I, I would have told you two weeks ago we still had a long way to go. Second scrimmage, you know, we didn't have our best day. Of course, we're pl- blocking some pretty dynamic guys as well, so they can make anybody uh, frustrated. But Poulet brings a tremendous amount of flexibility and versatility to us. I think he factors in the starting lineup at any point. Uh, and, and he and Dolph both can slide from center to guard. And so I think there's a tremendous amount of versatility going on there. Um, I, I've been pleased that with daily progression, we've we've been without Poulet. We've been without Jacob South. We've been without Cole Motes already at times during fall camp. That has – started to look more and more like normal the last few days, and we've started to play better. Uh, I'm hoping that all those guys are ready to play Saturday. I, you know, They all look to be on paper ready, healthy, and have enough snaps under their belt that I think we can calm down and, and kind of get back to um, some continuity up there that we just weren't able to have the first two weeks. And you'll see a few young names and new names that, that pop in there. Waylon Lapuaho has been one of those – that everybody's seen, and he's been thrown in, and Meacham and Bowles. I mean, we got more bodies than we had a year ago. Now what five play most of the snaps and what one or two guys plug and play to keep them fresh is is really where we're at moving forward uh, up into game time. Anderson, I guess – what would you at least suspect would be UConn's offensive and defensive identity? I know there's obviously in-game in stuff, but what do you think is going to be what they hang their hat on on both sides of the ball? Yeah, I mean, I think we're kind of expecting a little bit of a pro-style approach offensively, a lot of shifts and motions, a lot of movements, formations, to which is a challenge because, you know, we really don't show our defense that on a daily basis. We sp- stay spread out and play fast, so – that is going to be a complete different dynamic for our defense to deal with it. Uh, which quarterback goes may may determine how much quarterback run they they do. But but basically, from what we've seen from the offense coordinator in past seasons and kind of his mo is is you're going to have to you're going to have to match up to a lot of different looks. You're going to have to communicate really really well and, and get lined down to all the the. Uh, pre-snap motions and, and and bells and whistles. And so we don't want to turn guys loose and keep guys uncovered and end up out-gapped because we don't do a good job of that. Defensively, uh, you know, we, we've got to be prepared for three and four down fronts. Uh, what little bit we've seen, you know, it's it's hard to tell because Jim's uh, – the players he had in the UCLA liked to play a lot of man coverage, but it wasn't something they played a whole lot of last year at UConn. So it's probably a little bit more of a guesswork for our offense going against their defense than um, than maybe our defense is dealing with. 
uh, we, we really don't have a great clue of what we're going to see. And, and now with the late defensive coordinator change, if that's what it is, it, it could throw a wrinkle into that as well. So line down and play sound football and try not to make a lot of mistakes and figure it out as we go. Chuck Franson with 106.9 The Fan again. Just the, the return game has been a weapon for USU for several years. Savon Scarver. He's gone, so you got to replace the kick return and punt return. How is that developing, do you feel, for your team this coming season? Well, I don't know if we got Savon Scarver back there, and the guy's an All-American, so that's super big shoes to fill. Uh, but I do feel like uh, with the addition of Tyrell Vaughn from, um, from California, he's a two-time All-American out there, and he has proven to be really, really comfortable back there catching punts, and, and making the first guy miss is something that just comes very naturally to him. Uh, Cooper Cooper Jones is going to potentially get some opportunities. Kyle Van Leeuwen, you know, any of those three guys, you could see a punt return and kick return. Some of those same names with the addition of uh, Robert Briggs, a freshman, A.J. Carter, looked at him, returned kicks back in high school and has proven to uh, to be a guy that we, we, could, we could lean on as well. Uh, there are still kind of works in progress, but I feel like we've got a good pool of guys to choose from. Uh, and, and probably in the very near future, we'll settle in on this is this guy's job. These two guys are going to go back for kick returns and, and won't make a lot of adjustments. But this first week or two, you, you might see more than, than normal. Just trying to get a feel for who really has a knack for it, who's comfortable in game settings and who can maybe give us an edge, uh, potentially score in those, in those two, you know, those two teams. I want to ask you about Kaleo Nevis. He's a guy, obviously, he's been in the program for a couple of years. Um, it seems like in a lot of position groups, you um, pl just plugged in transfers, and obviously Switz may have been that guy in striker if he hadn't gotten hurt. But can I ask you just about Kaleo and his development and progression and uh, how he was able to earn a spot where he's probably going to see a lot of – a lot of playing time at that striker position. Well, he'll absolutely see a lot of playing time. Between striker and special teams, he's going to be an impact. Um, he's one of those guys, I think, that does exactly what you asked him to do. Just keep developing. Uh, keep working hard every day. Don't, uh, you know, don't get frustrated because you're not the guy right now. Push to be ready when your opportunity presents itself. He handled Switz coming in perfectly. Just kept working and, and got better over the course of the spring when Switz went down create an opportunity for him. He's still competing for the job with Amari uh, OKK coming in from California. I mean, he's still got somebody in there battling. We can't count on one guy. We need to have multiple players that we can throw at the problem. There's a potential to slide the back end around and slide another guy up if need be. So he's done what we've asked him. He's continued to improve. He's a better tackler. Physically, he's in better shape. He understands the defense at a higher level, and he's a guy that we trust. And so he is going to impact the game in a lot of ways between striker and, and special teams. Uh, you know, how many snaps and what those packages look like, a lot of that's going to be dictated based off the offense we're playing on a given week anyway. Coach, Brian Phillips again. Um, just talking about packages, in the event you went with a nickel package, what cornerback do you see filling that spot? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that 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 we have to sub package initially with with the versatility we have in Amari, the versatility we have in Kaleo, uh, but we've got the ability uh, uh, to we've got three corners we feel really really good about right now today, and, and AJ Carter, uh, Mike, and, and Dre, and any of those guys could plug in that spot. But at the same time, feel really good about our safety position now having Dom Tatum back on the field with Hunter and uh, Ike and Gervin. So I, I think um, we've got the versatility to either slide a corner in or slide a safety down and match personnel, big personnel, small personnel, whether we're nickel, dime, whatever that may be. We're healthy at this point, and we do have some flexibility that maybe we didn't have this time last year. Jason Turner again. I, I just wanted to ask you one more UConn personnel question. Uh, most of their uh, key guys back offensively at, at skill positions were freshmen last year. Their re leading returning rusher, three of their top four. 
pass catchers a year ago. Um, how dangerous can those guys be, you know, with a full year of experience under their belts? They already did some pretty good things last year as freshmen. Yeah, I think it's it's hard to hard to really judge just what kind of jump a guy can make. We, um, I mean, you look at guys in the past, you look at Derek Wright and, and DT. You know, I know DT didn't play a ton of games, but his productivity was fairly low. Derek Wright, you know, was almost non-existent as a junior, and then both those guys blow up. Uh, that can happen on any roster, depending on uh, – we just talked about Kaleo. Just watching Kaleo grow over the last year has been a lot of fun. Uh, so I, I think you just have to anticipate that these guys are going to come in and play their best, and they're going to be dynamic across the board, and it's going to take our absolute best effort to win. Uh, and be surprised if that's not the case. Uh, I would much rather take that approach than than look at the stat sheet and say, "Well, they're just not bringing anything back." I, I, uh, you got to give credit for off season and, and guys working and putting in the time and effort and improving over the course of the off season, and that's that's what we'll prepare for. One final question for Coach Anderson. You, you've got a little bit of a unique body type with Dom in that safety room. Do you do you see him as sort of a uh, able to play a kind of a different role than the other guys in that room, or do you do you expect him to be kind of just like what what Hunter or what Gervin or like? Well, he does have some length and some range, and he's put on about 10, 15 pounds from what you guys saw a year ago. I do think he has the versatility to play really any of the three safety positions, but uh, you know it, it takes it takes more than two guys to play a whole game. The pace we want to chase the ball and and what we ask these guys to do also in special teams, you're going to see Dom, Hunter, uh, you're going to see Gervin, you're going to see Ike Larson. All, all four of those guys are going to play. And as we were talking sub-package-wise, there's a chance that you can see three of them on the field at any given time. And all of them are starters on multiple special teams, which is you know the first play defense anyway. Those coverage teams are important. And, and they all factor in big. Uh, so I, I think it's going to take them all. And, and Dom definitely gives us a lot of versatility and length that you don't always get uh, back there in, in the back end. Hey, Jake Nielsen, KSL.com. Just uh, initial impressions. How stoked are you to be uh, starting the season? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I know some, a lot of the guys are really excited as well. Just, uh, just coming off last season and uh, just excited to – Start this new journey with the new with the with the guys and um, some of the new guys as well. Jay, Jake Ellis, uh, Utah Statesman. What do you think of the new jerseys uh, that were just announced today? The white ones with the stripes and Merlin Olsen throwbacks. Yeah, I just I just saw them this morning uh, from the from the video they dropped. Uh, I, I think they're really cool. I think I'm excited to wear them and uh, uh, see see how they fit. Eric Branson with 106.9 The Fan. Um, your assessment of how fall camp has gone and, and getting ready for game one, you feel like you guys are are there? Yeah, I mean, I thought I thought fall camp went, went really well. Um, just coming off last season, it's the second year in our defense. So, you know, I think I thought things went really, really smoothly and uh, we transitioned really fast, especially with the with the filling with filling spots from the transfer portal and kind of the incoming guys. But, um, you know, I think the guys – who came in, bought bought into the program, and uh, you know I think as a group we're we're uh, we're excited and ready to go. It's a quick follow up. Coach is very high on just your personal development, not just on the field, but also as a, a leader in the defense. Do you, how do you feel about that assessment and the role that you're playing this year? Yeah, no, that was, that was something that I uh, wanted to f heavily focus, uh, especially this off season, just. Just being more vocal and uh, you know, kind of leading, leading by example, and kind of just helping the younger guys out and uh, kind of just the guys around me um, succeed. So that's been a huge focal point for me, and uh, it's something that I'm continuing to work on for sure. Hey, how has your uh, your chemistry developed with uh, with MJ since you guys have both, or since he's come into the program? And how are you guys gonna sort of just work together and kind of kind of fit at that linebacker spot? <clears throat> yeah, no, I thought I thought I thought he's done a really really good job just uh, ever since he stepped in in the spring or whenever he came in. But uh, I think he's just done a really good job of just 
learning the playbook, um, you know, just attention to detail and kind of just being being out there more comfortably. And uh, I think I think he's done a really good job, and I'm I'm excited to play with him. Eric Branson again, just how difficult is it for you as a player trying to scout a team that has so many transfers, a new coach, trying to set a new tone for their program and uh, trying to be opportunistic against the team with some inexperience and, and has struggled in the previous years? Uh, yeah, it's a little difficult, but at the same time, you know, we're just worried about ourselves, especially week one with uh, kind of a new scheme. They're, they're having a new coaching staff and whatnot, like you said. But uh, I think at the end of the day, we've just been primarily focused on ourselves uh, and kind of just doing our job. Uh, so coming, so when it is week one uh, coming out, uh, we'll be ready to go and uh, locked in. So, okay, Patrick Lehor with the egg ship. You've got a a pretty good halfback on the uh, uh, on the docket here in Nate Carter to have to go up against. What have you seen from him on film? What are you what are you expecting to, to see from him on Saturday? Yeah, I think he's a really good back. Um, you know, I know he's going to come here Saturday and. Uh, give it his best. And ultimately we're just going to have to uh, play our best ball because uh, at the end of the day, regardless of what they did in previous years, we know that they're going to come and, um, and show out for sure. Any other questions for hey, Brian Phillips with USU, big blue USU Aggie news. Um, You've got a couple of newcomers sprinkled in to the depth chart here, but for the most part, it's not necessarily starters that are back, but there's a lot of experience returning from last season. How's that helped you guys gel as a defense and helped you integrate guys like Gerv and, and MJ and, and Danny Gresham? Yeah, I mean, like you said, a lot of the experienced guys are returning as well. Um, so that just helped helped a ton especially with the new guys I mean I think I think it's been a seamless transition to be honest from uh spring to fall camp those guys just buying in uh buying into the program and kind of what we do here and so you know I'm really excited to see what those how those guys are going to play on Saturday and uh you know I think they do really really well Jacob Nielsen KSL.com you've been a guy that the, the coaching staff has been really pleased with uh, throughout fall camp and stuff. How do you feel like you've done in these recent practices this week? And how are you feeling just about your, your skill set and ability going into your senior season? Oh, uh, man, I just, just, I feel the same way I've been feeling, man, just staying down, working towards it, toward what I want. Uh, this last few practices, you know, we've been throwing the ball, we've been game planning and stuff like that. So, you know, we ain't, it ain't been too much really like crazy stuff going on, like a pet, like competition wise, but like, you know, these last few practices, I like how the offense and stuff been rolling. I like how we've been rolling and throwing the ball and stuff. So I feel like my skill set going into this game going to be going to be smooth. Everything will be smooth. Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Uh, Coach uh, earlier talked about how well, that wide receiver room had the most changeover of any you know, position group from last year to this year, but highlighted you as – a, a leader with the, the experience coming back, but also integrating a lot of these new guys. How do you feel like that, that group is coming together with the wide receivers at Utah State coming into the start of the season? Uh, I feel like everybody coming along, man. Like I said before, everybody, you know, everybody's able to make a big play. Everybody's capable of taking anything and turning it into something. So, you know, uh, B. Cobb, Zig, Terrell, Nana, everybody, Cobb and Lauren, everybody's been coming along. I feel like everybody getting more acclimated into the system you know, uh, the splits and stuff like that. So, you know, I feel like everybody getting more comfortable. So, you know, I feel like the, the whole room in general has just made a big push. This is a follow-up. This is, you're going up against a team that uh, has had a lot of changes this year compared to last year. How tough is it? As, a, as an offense, try to scout what they might do on defense? Uh, I mean, it's kind of tough, you know, kind of trying to game plan to see what defense, defense you're going to see, different coverages and looks, personnel, stuff like that. But, you know, our offense is built off a of reaction, and, you know, you know, options. So, you know, we're just going to go out there, you know, and just react and, uh, you know, and see, you know, have a good game at that point.
not really too much you can really do, especially with all the change they have. And kind of a follow up to Eric's first question, um, just with all the turnover, is just the in the wide receiver group and team meetings and stuff is is the vibe different with having Ryan and Nai Nai and all these guys? Nai Nai was there last year, but all these guys coming in, or is it is it kind of the same thing? And how have you kind of as the leader that you have become? How have you been able to um, keep this standard of expectations and cultures and whatnot? Ah uh, man, it's you know it's still kind of the same. We all still have that same brotherhood, you know. Obviously, it's different guys in the seats, but you know the brotherhood of the of the receiver room is always going to be the same. The expectation of going hard every day. I feel like Coach Cephalo do a good job of implementing that, and you know, and you know us older guys going out by example and showing the younger guys how it's supposed to be done and stuff like that. So, man, you know, honestly, I feel like we all, you know, we all bonded in jail really well. You know, there's no real. You know, just deficiency in the room. Everybody, you know, everybody loves everybody in the room. We all love to work. We love work. We love working hard. So, you know, that's kind of really it, man. You know, all of, just a bunch of guys working hard trying to achieve the same goal. Let's keep out your buddy, Devin Tompkins. Have you been uh, keeping up with DT? Obviously, he's down in your hometown trying to make the Bucks roster. What are your thoughts on him and what he's been doing? Hey man, you know I, 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 you know of course we'd be keeping in contact, but you know, you know he in camp as well, so you know try to take just less stress off him. But man, he's doing everything, you know he he expected what I expected, everybody in Logan expected. So you know I just hope he continues to keep doing what he's doing, keep doing, continue to make great plays. D right as well, out there in Carolina, you know that you know holding the standard for the room. So you know that's just setting the standard for the rest of the guys following up. Anything else for Justin? I'll ask you one more thing. And just speaking of standards and expectations, obviously for the room, but for the team as a whole, just coming off of a, a conference championship team and now coming back for new year, just what, what do you want this team to be defined as as you guys start the season? And what, what do you hope to, to bring to the table this year as, as a whole, not just the wide receiver group? Uh man, just playing hard, man, and you know finishing. That's been our biggest thing. That's what been that's been the biggest thing that's been working for this family is just going hard every day, finishing, executing, and doing your job. That's literally all we do. You know, taking care of taking care of one another. So you know, when anybody come to Utah State, the first thing I want them to you know, like as a team, like know from us when they played us that these guys played their butt off and they're gonna play to the whistle blown. How pleased are you with your individual progress from when you first got here two years ago to where you're at now? Uh, I say I'm very pleased, you know, kind of, you know, you seeing all the hard work you put in outside of the practices and the games and stuff. Everybody else really don't see, you know, kind of see it and paying off. So, you know, I, I say I'm pleased with myself. You know, obviously, you know, there's still room for improvement. Obviously, I don't. You know, I try not to get too complacent with things, but just to, just as progress from the guy that you've seen two years ago to now, I feel like I'm very pleased.